Hi friends, how are you? Welcome to this week's edition of my favorite time of the week, AKA Ask Me Anything. I am here because every week I show up to answer your questions, to stay connected and to always be of service. So the way it works is I answer the most popular questions that have been upvoted by the community. And I will also be answering your live questions, so leave them here. All right, so let's dive into our first question of the day. Robin asked, how to quickly and efficiently batch two weeks worth of posts, even with all of the wonderful work that y'all, JSTAR and company create, it took me about six hours to do 15 Instagram posts. There has to be a quicker way. So number one, let's try a reframe. If it took you six hours to do 15 posts and you had the resources that we, myself, the team and social curator create, Imagine how much more time it would take you if you didn't have the resources. But beyond all that, let's actually get into the practicality of how I approach. I am going into a promotional season, and so it's going to be very important for me to strategically lay out my social media posts so they aren't all sales driven and turn people off. So I'm going to walk you through my exact process that I do as I am planning content. Number one, I look at national holidays. These are things like, uh, 4th of July, Christmas, Thanksgiving. What I'm doing is as I'm looking at the content, are there any national holidays that I can plan my social media posts around? Number two, I then look at social media holidays. These are silly things like uh, National Best Friends Day or Siblings Day or you know Pizza Day, Ice Cream Day, because those social media holidays allow me to insert myself in the social conversation and not have to like really think hard about the content because I could use the hashtag, get discovered by other accounts and also keep it relevant to my business. So number one, national holidays, number two, social media holidays, and number three, engagement drivers. Now we all have very different engagement drivers depending on our followers. I know that there are some posts that just do extraordinarily well for me. Um, other than some other posts. So if I happen to be posting a picture with my parents, that's an engagement driver. That post does really well for me. I know it's gonna do well. If I do a post of like a silly photo of my husband and my business partner, like if I post a silly photo of us, I know that that's gonna do really well. These are what I call engagement drivers, things that I know are gonna be tried and true. But you can't have an engagement driver every single day. I mean, sure, I wish I could have an engagement driver every single day, but I don't always have silly photos to post of my husband. I'm not always every day hanging out with my parents to get a parent's photo, right? So I do the best that I can to balance out what I know will be an engagement driver so that I can make sure that I'm connecting with people in real time to kind of bump myself within the algorithm and get those conversations started. Then the last thing that I think about are my business objectives. So those four things, national holidays, social media holidays, engagement drivers, AKA posts that I know are gonna do really well that will give me a nice little pop. And then number four, what are my business objectives? Like I had mentioned, I'm gonna go into a promotional period next month. And so I want to make sure that I'm actually communicating the value of the offer that I'm presenting. So much so that in January, Social Curator is closing enrollment and we're gonna be closing enrollment for the first time. So I wanna make sure that my social media posts are all pointing to that so people can't come back to me and be like, hey Jasmine, I never knew. So again, this has to be strategic. So once I lay out those four things, then what I do is I use the Social Curator caption templates because it's hard thinking of stuff to say off the top of your head. So. This right here is a sneak peek on the inside of Social Curator and uh, on the right side, you will see a category and this is like, we wanna make sure that we're showing the benefits. So I'll read the caption. When someone asks me what I do for a living, it's tempting to simply respond with, then I get to fill in the blank. Like I get, it's tempting to respond with, I'm a photographer. But I know deep down, it doesn't encompass the results I get for my clients. Really, I should say I'm a blank. I would say, I should really say that I am a historian, a document preserver, a tastemaker, anything that I can fill in blank to customize for my business. And the last component is, what's a more description of what you do? So the anatomy of that template would be, number one, people think I should be this. And then I say, but I should really be this. And then the call to action, the question, that thing that's gonna get people to talk back to you is, what is a more accurate description of you? So I use the template to get spark ideas. I fill in the blanks. I tweak it to make my own. 
I expedite it. So once I go through the national holidays, and most of the time, Social Curator gives you caption templates to help you talk about St. Patrick's Day and Fourth of July and Thanksgiving. And then I go through the social media holidays, like National Cookie Day. Oh, I, I can talk about, like, I eat gluten-free cookies, inserting myself in the social conversation. I use the caption templates for my business objectives, and then I modify. So I have to also come out and say, practice saves you time. So the question was asked, Jasmine, it takes me so much time, to which I respond, yes, but when you first learned how to speak and use words, it took you time before you got as fluent as you are now. And when you first started riding a bike, the practice of riding a bike took you much longer than now you can hop on a bike and take off. The only way you get to move faster is doing it more often. Can I get an amen? All right, do I need a little bit of a breather? Am I talking too fast? Is anybody lost? Do I need to have any clarifications? Is anybody going to co-sign for me? I'm out here, out here on the struggle bus being like, are you okay? Are we okay? Okay, friends. I just want to make sure that we are connected. Here I am, nervous, asking all of these rhetorical questions. But you know how I do. I just show up the way that I am. Okay, so Marie, yes to the gluten-free cookies. Yes, queen, yes. Okay, Francis asks, What's the best way to know and understand your why? I need to understand it to take the next steps in my business. Okay, so Francis, I have to let you know, I absolutely love this question and so many business owners shy away from sharing what their why is. But I have to tell you, in order for your business to stand out in a saturated market, AKA there are other people and businesses that sell what you sell that are less expensive that ship quicker, that have more social media followers, right? Like there's a bunch of other businesses that do something very similar to you. And how you stick out is by number one, building an experience around a brand and telling people why you do what you do. Specifically in the millennial market, as the market matures, people aren't just out here buying peanut butter. People are out here buying peanut butter because of the way that the peanuts were harvested on an organic farm in Alabama, a family tradition of harvesting peanuts all the way back to their great granddaddy, right? Like we want to know why business owners are doing what they do, specifically a small business owner. So if you're kind of like Jasmine, I, I, I need to know this. I am here to tell you that no one knows your why until you tell them. It's tempting to be like, oh, you know, people people love the fact that I'm a graphic designer. People love the fact that I sell essential oils. Okay, but they want to know your why and they will never know your why until you tell them. So let's get into the three ways that can help you define your why to share it on social media. Number one, what made you start your business? I know that you probably think it's like really silly and trite, but when I read, are you guys familiar at all with Siete Tortilla Chips? Siete tortillas. Now, siete is I'm gluten free and it's a pretty serious thing because I love flour tortillas and I can't eat flour tortillas. Like I went years without having a burrito. You guys, I'm a Latina. Do you know what it feels like to not have a burrito? I feel like I'm, I'm suffering a loss in my life. All of a sudden, this tortilla brand called Siete comes out and they do a grain free, gluten free tortilla. Now, before you roll your eyes, I'm telling you guys, it's real legit. It is really legit. But on the back side of the Siete Tortilla package, it tells the story of a Latino family in Texas whose daughter had a very severe gluten allergy and their grandma, their Latina grandma from Mexico, had to co-sign on this tortilla recipe. And once grandma said it was good, then they went out and started producing these tortillas. I don't know grandma, I don't know the family, I don't even know what it's like to be a family in Texas, but I read the story and I was like, I like it. I like what they're doing. They just told me their why. They made tortillas so that their daughter and sister could enjoy the same dinner as them. Hot dang, yes, and sign me up. Number two, what are you doing to change the world? Now, I know that this is super lofty, and I know people are like, changing the world? Jasmine, I make dog leashes. Jasmine, I just take photos. Jasmine, I, and here's the thing. When I ask you, what are you doing to change the world? Do not come back at me and say, I just am a virtual assistant. I am just a podcaster. No, baby boo. 
You are the whole thing and the dang thing. You are the master blaster from Lancaster. You need to show up until you blow up. So there's no pre there's no prefix. I am just a this, right? I am I am telling you that you have the capacity to change the world even in a very small way. I want you to find how doing what you do as a business can help change the world. Now you might say, I just sell hair conditioner and shampoo. How is that changing the world? Well, let's go deep. What you're selling on a literal level is shampoo. What you're selling from an emotional level is what? Confidence, assuredness, a way to show up differently in a boardroom, a way to show up differently in the warehouse. When you talk about what you're selling from an emotional perspective, things change. Do I feel as the CEO of Social Curator that I'm doing something to change the world? You better believe I do. I people like, but Jasmine, you just do like social media coaching and you provide resources. How is that changing the world? You want to know how it's changing the world? I might be on a literal sense selling social media coaching. On a literal sense, I'm selling community. In a literal sense, I'm selling masterclasses. What am I selling from an emotional perspective? Belief in the impossible. Period, the end. I show up and I make people believe that their impossible dream is actually a possibility. I am one of the 1% of those crazy people who believe that when somebody tells me, Jasmine, I have this far off gnarly dream, I'm like, we're gonna make it happen. We're going to do it. Why? Because if I change a single business owner, I change a home. And if I change a home, I change a neighborhood. And if I change a neighborhood, I change a city. And if I change a city, I see change a county. And if I change a county, I change a state. If I change a state, I change a nation. And one nation can change the entire world. And I believe that that begins with one flicker of a flame. I believe that I have an ostentatious, crazy dream that in three years, I will empower 10,000 business owners to be making more than six figures. I believe it. This is my reality. I believe that if in three years we have 10,000 business owners all making over six figures, we have radically changed the way small businesses are run and the belief in a legacy to change a trajectory of a family who's struggling into a family that can make very different financial decisions for themselves and their future generations. I believe I am changing the world. No, not through caption stop not through caption templates and not through lifestyle stock photography. I am changing the world by telling somebody you think it's impossible. I am here to show you it's impo it's possible. I am here to double your business and I am here in three years. Mark it today that by 2023, I and my team will be tipping our hat to 10,000 business owners who are making over six figures. That's what I believe. I believe that so patently, and I'm gonna say it again and again, and if you're here and you're trying to learn your why, the last thing you could do, point three, is why do you love what you do? What made you start your business? What are you doing to change the world? And three, why do you love what you do? Now, I don't know about you, but if you can't tell me, if you can't tell right now why I love what I do, do I wanna sit here with no makeup going live on Facebook on a very stressful day? Probably not very high on my list, but I love this so much. I love you and I love, I know that sounds weird. I felt like it, we, you're gonna think I'm totally coming on strong like a brand new girlfriend or like a brand new boyfriend who's like dated you three times and wants to pop the question. We're not on the episode of The Bachelor. I'm just saying, I love you. Like I really love business owners who are being like, dang, I am trying to make it work. And because you're trying to make it work and because you're showing up for me, I will show up for you. If you can't tell why I love what I do, what I do. I don't know. Maybe I need to speak a little louder. What you can do for people who follow you is to empower them to understand why you love what you do. That, my friends, is how you start with the why. So shout out to Alyssa and Teresa and Mia and Hillary, all here representing. I am so honored and proud to help you and empower you to be the next big version of getting to your six-figure business. Okay, so uh, Sadaf had asked, as a solopreneur, how do I tackle creating video content for my IGTV and Facebook while balancing other things that work involves? Okay, I don't know about you, but if you are like Sadaf and you have all these moving pieces and you're like, how do I do all the things and do video? 
Can you give me a thumbs up? I just want to know because her, her, her question got upvoted quite a bit and people are like, I'm doing all the things. How do I show up in video and balance everything else? You want to know my answer? Y'all do a live Q and A. Well, hot dang, what are we doing right now? I want to be very forthcoming and let people know that yes, I am working with a videographer on a regular basis to create video content, but that was not always the case. For two years, I went live on Facebook and for over a year, I was going live on Instagram because what happens is like you say, hey guys, I'm gonna go live tomorrow, do you have any questions? And then you just answer questions. People are giving you content that they wanna hear from you. And so all you have to do is show up and answer questions and you are making video. The going live is the best discipline and practice that you can get on behalf of your business before you actually venture to invest in a videographer. So people are like, how do I, like, how do I get video? Turn on the live button. And that is the hardest, but the most rewarding. It is the sharpest learning curve, but it is the most rewarding. It is the most awkward and uncomfortable and you fumble and like, you feel like nobody's watching. It is the most rewarding. So you want to do video? Go live, baby boo. It is so easy. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Nicole says, I am going to be part of your 100,000 crew. Yes, you are, queen. Yes, you are. Okay. Let's get into another question from Robin. Organizing pictures. They are not where they should be when I go to use them. Where to put the downloaded pics so they stay findable on your iPhone and Mac Pro? Oh, okay. So I don't know about you, but I, as a photographer, as a content creator, I am taking photos at a bunch of different times in a bunch of different ways. And so when I go and I get a photo from Dropbox, or if I go and get a photo from my Google Drive, or if I download a photo from Social Curator, these are all where I keep my photos, I download them. And they download in your camera roll as the most recent. However, when you go to upload them into Facebook or you upload them into Instagram, the photos are not categorized according to when you downloaded them. They're downloaded according to what time they were exported. Here's an example. I was on a vacation in Hawaii three weeks ago, but I wanted to post a picture on Instagram. So I went to my Dropbox folder where I keep my personal photos. I downloaded the photo. But when I went to Instagram to upload it, it wasn't the most recent. So I had to scroll back three weeks to get my photo from Hawaii. So what I have noticed has been the quickest and easiest way is now when I download a photo from Social Curator or from Dropbox or from my Google Drive, I will download it and then I'll screen grab it on my phone because the screen grab is the most recent export. I screen grab it. And then when I go to Instagram, that screen grab of the photo is at the very top. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions? Okay, I wanna make sure that we're on, like this is my little hack workaround. I know it's ghetto fabulous, but hey, I also know it works. Um, okay, so Gemma Lee says, I'm always trying to tie your content to my local service-based business. I struggle with this. Um, Gemma, can you be a little bit more specific about what the struggle is entirely? Because I believe firmly that service-based businesses are so driven around number one, the person, the service, the person who's delivering the service, or two, the team that is delivering the service. You're going to want to personalize the experience with the CEO that could be you. And if you have a team. And so when you're talking about tying in the content, tying in the content, when it comes back to telling your why, why do you do what you do? Why did you start your business? Why do you love your business? Why does the team love your business? I am telling you, people want to buy from service-based businesses that they feel connected to because there's a good chance, Gemma. Okay, so Gemma says, what content to share to target a local area rather than a worldwide audience? Gemma, it's the same. The content that you share to target somebody in Japan is the same content you would share to target somebody in your backyard. 98% is the same. The only thing I want you to do now, Gemma, is to make geographic references to your neck of the woods. And then in order to make your content be discovered, use geographic or location-based hashtags. 
So for instance, let's go back and we talk about using a caption. Actually, we just earlier today, let's do a little bit of a throwback. This is a caption template, the benefits. When somebody asks me what I do for a living, it's tempting to respond with, I'm a photographer. But I know deep down that I, that doesn't encompass the results I get from my clients. Really, I should say I am a memory maker. What's an accurate description of you? I would use that template like I am a memory maker in Newport Beach, California. And I love walking down by Pier 23 and afterwards going to Sidecar Donuts. The exact same template but I have customized it for geographic and location-based references that people in my neck of the woods would totally know. And then what am I gonna do? I'm going to hashtag Newport Beach, Newport Beach photographer, sidecar donuts, hashtag Newport Pier 23. I'm making the same conversation relevant to people in my neck of the woods. Gemma, let me know if that makes sense for you, boo-boo. I am here, I am here all day to help you guys. Okay. Let's get into uh, Tina's question. How do you keep redundant work fun? There are things that I have to do consistently and some days are easier than others. Now, I don't know about you. How many people feel like Tina? How many people are like, dang, this struggle is real. I can tell you that there are things that I do every single day in my business I'm not a fan of. I'm really not a fan of it. But I do it anyway. And I know you are going to do it anyway. And I believe that you do it anyway for this reason. And that reason is that I care less about fun and I focus more on freedom. I understand that I wish my business... Now, here's the thing. I have fun in my business, but my business doesn't have to be fun. That small little thing, like if I go in and I expect that everything in my business should be fun all the time, I'm going to be let down. But there are moments when I look back and I'm like, wow, it's in the pursuit of the financial freedom. It's in the pursuit of the creative freedom. It's in the pursuit of the freedom of not having to have a boss that I have fun, but it doesn't need to be fun. Not every task in my business needs to be fun for me to enjoy doing it. Why? Because redundancy and consistency are for the professionals. Ooh, I just came out and said that. I'm going to say it again because it bears repeating. Redundancy and consistency are for the professionals. You want to know who's not consistent? The hobbyists. You want to know who just wants to have fun all the time, all day, every day? The hobbyist. You want to know who shows up in rain or sunshine, in sleet, in snow, on good days, on bad days, on days you feel like you got punched in the gut, on days that you feel like you're on top of a mountain? You show up day in, day out every single minute doing the thing you have to do to build your business and move it forward, professionals. It ain't fun and it ain't glamorous, but it is worth every single step of the way. How you show up in the small things is how you will show up in the big things. So redundancy and consistency for the win, baby boo. We professionals do the work that the hobbyists are unwilling to do. And that is what makes us run profitable businesses. Hot dang, I'm here for it. If you are here for it, if you are here for your profitable business, if you are here to do the redundant things, if you are here to do the consistent things, if you're here to show up until you blow up, clap it up. Leave me a little love right here. That's what I'm saying. I'm out here preaching. Why? I love this. I love what I do. And I love your wild and crazy dreams. Um, shout out to Trisha, to Steven, to Francis. Love you all here. Okay, I show up every week. I'm here to answer questions. Be sure to tap in because I always ask for questions before I go live. If you would like your question answered, answered, be sure to ask it on Facebook. When I go live, we'll be able to pop it in. I hope you guys have a great and fantastic day. Much love, y'all. Have a good one.